Hey everyone, it's Sand. Now before I get the video going, uh, like this video and subscribe if you enjoy my content and you want to see more. Also, if you do have something you want me to talk about specifically in the future, a game, a specific topic, whatever, just leave a comment and let me know. Now, if you weren't aware, Gunpla has been experiencing some rather wonky server issues the last day or so, but we are being compensated for the downtime. Uh, for the arena being turned off, we're getting 80 arena coins, 800 Haro chips, 600,000 capital, and 5 100% energy recoveries. We're also getting 150 Haro chips from 8 9 to 8 14, so that's August 9 to August the 14th, and that's going to be what, 750 chips total? So overall, we're going to get a free 10 roll and a handful of other goodies for all the downtime and issues. I'm rather okay with that. Anyhow, during this downtime, I figured making a video to discuss some of the more obscure topics would probably be helpful for everyone. Now, on to the actual content. First off, uh, I want to talk job licenses and the purpose of them, as well as pilot AI. A job license is pretty much the AI settings you want your machine to have. The default for this is all rounder. This seems to default to the pilot's natural AI. In other words, what shows up in their info window, the little blurb there. Once you change the specified job license, they will change to use that AI specifically. Setting one up is as simple as selecting the Gunpla, putting a pilot on it, and then tapping the job license right under the C power indicator. Select an applicable job license and away you go. It's recommended to set up a job license due to the stat boost that they give, as well as the limit burst ability that gets added, depending on the job license you selected. Limit bursts are something that charge up during a fight, and when used, they'll be active for a period of time, granting bonus effects. It's like a timed buff. Also, in case you missed the blurb that came out during the tutorial, your reticle will tell you whether or not you're in optimal distance for your ranged weapon or not. This will be important for the shooter licenses. Now then. Infighter. It'll do what's printed on the tin. It gets in close, and it'll begin to melee the enemy to death. It's great for gap closing through use of the boosters, and it can probably throw a long-range AI off. The job license will greatly increase your Gunpla's melee attack, as well as add a shortcut to use the strong melee attack by double tapping right after a dash. Your guard option, however, is removed, and it's replaced with a charge. The infighter's limit burst will prevent flinching and boost melee attack damage for the duration of it. Outfighter will engage the target in a safer way. It'll use thrusters mainly for positioning and evading. It also mixes up the use of ranged weapons and melee. With this job license, it's more or less the same as an infighter. Boosts your melee damage, a strong melee option right after dashing, and the limit burst is the same. However, you will guard during dashes, and you don't lose the option to guard either. Defender is easiest to think of like an applied infighter. It gets in close, it does melee stuff, but it also liberally uses its shield to tank damage. It increases the armor and defense of your Gunpla, and its shield will actually cover 360 degrees. The Defender's Limit Burst makes the shield unbreakable. Enjoy your moving fortress. Supporter tends to stay at a safer distance, using ranged weapons to put pressure on targets. Which is actually really convenient when you recall the mini-stun from receiving an attack. This AI tends to prioritize Group EX skills, to nobody's surprise. The job license will greatly reduce the cooldown on your Support EX skills, and your guard is replaced by Charge. Limit Burst for this job is a large cooldown reduction for all your teammates' EX skills when it's active. Middle Shooter stays at a fair distance and fires its ranged weapon. Imagine something like Outfighter, except no melee. Your shot attack is greatly increased, all ranged weapons become effective from mid-range, and you gain a charged shot when you hold down the shoot button, and you guard during dashes. The limit burst for this job license is a large increase in shooting reload speed. Nice. Long Shooter camps just in range of its ranged weapon and it opens up. Don't expect any melee from this AI, if the enemy can even get close enough. It seems to always try and stay a fixed distance from the target, but it will fire as it flees. Also, it really likes to spam the charge shot. Much like the middle shooter, your shot attack is greatly increased, and you get the charge shot as well. However, there are two big differences. The first one, all ranged weapons become effective at long range. Shocking, right? And the second one is your limit burst will not just speed up your ranged reload time, but it also increases your maximum range as well. Keeping your distance, never been easier. 
The EX skills the pilot uses are affected by the job license as well. If you use a infighter, but have ranged DX skills, don't expect to see it used often, if at all. Conversely, if you use long shooter, don't expect it to use self buffs that don't boost range damage or melee EX skills. It's neat stuff, really, little things to keep in mind and how everything interacts. Now let's move on to some of the lesser known stuff, uh, platinum coins, recycling, and getting those damn circuits. The first thing to know about platinum coins, right now the only way to obtain them is by selling 2 star or higher parts. White gear nets no coins, just capital, so I'd recommend keeping it for fodder. In regards as to what to sell for platinum coins, that's a decision you're going to have to make yourself. If you don't think you're going to need those parts, or you don't want them, converting them to coins might be a good option. But I would check the platinum coin exchange to see if there's stuff that you want before selling parts. I can't make this decision for you, unfortunately. Now, recycling. This is more of a late game concern than anything. I I just don't think it's really something early game players really need to think about. But long and short of it, you need three four-star parts that share the same title. In other words, three parts in the same mobile suit set. So if you have a piece from Gundam and a piece from New Gundam, those don't work. But if you have two parts from the Aegis, those will work. Anyways, you need three of them and then you sacrifice them to the RNG gods. The recycled display will tell you what part positions can come out, so if you put in like three head pieces, it'll tell you everything but a head can come out. If you put in three random pieces, it'll tell you you can get anything. Anyways. Once you've done that, there's two results that can happen. The first one is the part that comes out shares the same title as the sacrificed parts. It could actually even be the same part you just sacrificed if it didn't limit it out. Or, it just gives you a part that shares the same attribute as the ones you put in. So, speed, power, technique, whatever. Something to consider with this is that it seems the base rarity of the part isn't taken into account. For example, if you have 3 star parts and you upgrade them to 4 star, and then recycle them, you can get the 4 star version of that same set, even though the base rarity wasn't 4 stars. That's actually shown in the demo image that they have for recycling. There's still a lot to test with this feature, because we haven't really gotten around to using it yet, but that's the gist of it. Finally, uh, circuits. Those things that you need to tune up parts. By the time you finish the story mode, and the normal free mission sets, you'll probably have a good chunk of white and green circuits. But that's not what you're looking for, I imagine. You want those blue, and especially those purple ones to upgrade your 4 stars to 5 stars. I'm just going to break your heart up front, right now there's no way to farm those rarities of circuits. The only way right now to obtain 3 star circuits is through either the platinum coin exchange or through events, while the 4 star circuits are even less available, you can only get them from events. Don't expect to see 5 star parts for a while. Personally though, I don't mind. Putting effort in makes the reward that much sweeter, as long as the effort to payout ratio is an imbalance to hell. Oh, and a quick note before I wrap the video up, uh, about crashing mid-battle. I've had it happen to myself a couple of times, and I know other people have had it done too, but no worries. Energy is only permanently taken when you press game over or mission clear. Crashing mid-fight won't affect your energy pool, you know, you just get back in there and you're fine. This also means you can save scum by closing your game when things go wrong. You didn't hear that from me though. So I think this is a rather good use of all the downtime we've been getting right now. I wish I could have gotten more footage for it, but unfortunately because, you know, the game is down, there's only so much I can do, so I used a lot of recycled footage and whatnot from previous videos, so my apologies for that. Hopefully the game comes up soon and we can start playing it again, and actually I'm really happy, a lot of people have been adding me on the game and following me through that, so thanks guys. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap the video up here, Um, I'll put out the next one. I don't know if it'll be about this or about a loon. We'll play it by ear when we get there. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next video.